Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is TW, TW, TW's Arrow with the Walk. It's getting near Christmas. So who's still wearing a black shirt and celebrating like it's 1936 all over again? <laughs> it looks like fresh sewage, said the Guardian this week. They taste tested Christmas dinner flavoured foods, from soup and crisps to sarnies. What do you expect? It's libertarian Britain. Everything because our beaches and rivers are full of sewage is sewage flavoured food. <laughs> The Tories have brought very little to the table in Britain, but what they have managed to do is chuck our own sewage back in our faces. <laughs> this Christmas, the stench of sewage will only be matched by the stench of the Tories' corruption. <laughs> Thank fuck, I'm a celebrity's back. And now we can laugh at far-right Britain's finest celebs. According to the papers, I'm a celebrity's Richard Maidley was blabbering and talking nonsense hours before his exit. So no one noticed any difference, did they? <laughs> and he was left to gibber until he died of insane foolishness on the set. He died as he lived. Welcome to UK television. Apparently poor old Maidley was dehydrated in the middle of a storm and the wettest year in decades. There wasn't any champagne to drink, was there? And all the Tesco's were warned to close well in advance. <laughs> it's all happening here in Devon too. Derelict Totney's Dairy Crest site could become a, an holiday destination. Florida has Disney World and Devon has the derelict Tottenham's Dairy Crest site, where you can watch the dancing milk bottles and jam and cream, dancing one another around to be the first on the scones. <laughs> Talking about Devon, Josh Widdicombe on the last leg decided Oliver Crumble was his dick of the year. Well, it's not 1650, is it, Josh? <laughs> Probably because he doesn't want to upset any of his mates like Boris Javid, Matt Hancock, Sadiq and GB News. <laughs> Thank God we're saved. We learned this week that Nobel-winning stock market theory can be used to help save our coral reefs. So the people who are causing global warming, the far-right libertarian wheeler dealers, are paying us back by using their money to repair the damage. No, not a bit of it. They found some daft theory about how to make money and offered it back to us as help in clearing up the mess they've made. <laughs> No thanks, we'll do it ourselves, with hard work and not bullshit and smoke screens. With a bit of luck, these people will drown in their own money before we drown in the rising sea levels. <laughs> this week saw snow trapping 60 drinkers, including an Oasis tribute band in the Yorkshire Dales pub for a third night, after the storm our wind chaos. Imagine the pain and agony of being stuck for three days, buried in snow with an, an Oasis tribute band. <laughs> After the 100th rendition of Champagne Supernova, some of the people trapped there were driven to suicide. The pub didn't run out of beer, but it did run out of earplugs. <laughs> well, I suppose it could have been Steps or a death metal band. <laughs> Boris Johnson's tree planting strategy is in flames as the UK spends six times more on a wood burning power station than on forests. The Tories will make money out of any crisis, won't they? What about social care? Bundle the old dears up and sell them for kindling. Tree planting strategy, does that mean planting the money meant to grow forests in your back pocket? <laughs> Far-right libertarian celebrities Katie Price and Carl Woods revealed this week that they were living out of suitcases and their three dogs were causing chaos in an hotel room. Or rather like a pair of ventriloquist dummies living in the kennels. <laughs> Police owned up to spending nearly £2 million unsticking Insulate Britain protesters from the major roads. What are the police using to unstick the protesters? Gold, frankincense and myrrh? <laughs> How about some cheap solvent or hot water? Or leave the protesters there, and now it's cold, they'll all bugger off. <laughs> Independent decided that if Boris Johnson wants to fix the further education system, he should watch MasterChef. Why not fill the House of Commons full of bakers and get politicians to make the bread rolls and cakes? <laughs> 
Boris hasn't got time to watch MasterChef. He's too busy thinking of new ways to nick the country's money. <laughs> there was more trouble for Boris Johnson this week as Dominic Cummings' colleague Dub the Gazelle was tipped to join the chatty pig in Rishi Sunak's rival court. I don't know what the hell they're talking about either. <laughs> Parliament stopped a woman MP bringing her child into Parliament this week. So why not let the nipper feed some of the animals? It sounds like a bloody zoo. <laughs> I've blown up every part of my life. Wailed ashamed my uncle. Apologised again in a first TV interview since losing his job and wife over an office affair. Well, it saved us blowing your life up, I suppose. <laughs> The best way for the Tories to help out society would be if they bought one another suicide vests for Christmas. <laughs> oh, why the interview now, Matt? Months after the sacking. Well, he's currently being investigated for giving an old mate who run a pub a PPE contract. That would be naturally the first thing you'd do in a crisis, wouldn't it? Get your mate from the boozer to make rubber gloves and face masks. <laughs> This week we heard that Labour had a 10% swing. What's that? Another bargain on Amazon's Black Friday? <laughs> Angela Rayner knifed Keir Starmer in the back by dubbing herself more spicy than the Labour leader. I bet that really hurt Keir Starmer as he tucked into yet another working class curry down his local curry house. <laughs> This week, the new European reckoned that Boris was heading for oblivion. So, should he open a theme park? What, a theme of constant failure and lies repeated over and over again? <laughs> that won't be very entertaining for the children, will it? They'd buy tickets at the door, but before you knew it, Boris would have done a U-turn and decided to build 5,000 houses on the site instead. <laughs> Covid is back in the news again. Don't kiss strangers under the mistletoe, a minister advised this week. My advice is kiss as many strangers as you like, as long as they aren't far-right libertarians, or you might be spiked as you clinch to pucker up. <laughs> Danny Dyer has been out of the news for five minutes, so he decided to reveal his real name and said Dad was off his nut, signing the birth certificate. <laughs> Apparently, shock horror, his crazy dad called him Daniel. Looks like daddy f the only sensible one in the family and has, fort and has fortunately escaped the Dyer clan. Off his nut, what was, <laughs> what was Danny Dyer's dad, a bloody squirrel? <laughs> the news took a scientific turn this week when a new eco-friendly plastic made out of bloody salmon sperm, of all things, was created in China. Sperm is combined with vegetable oil to create a soft, cyclable, moldable gel, which can be used for electronics, but it has to be kept dry. Sounds like one of Gordon Ramsay's bloody recipes, doesn't it? <laughs> Go into your local Chinese and order some. However, if it does get a bit damp, the electrics start to swim upstream, looking for eggs to fertilise. <laughs> Piers Morgan is brain dead from Covid, but he's still appearing in the press. He had his fans in stitches this week as he modelled a sexy cult in a St Andrew's Day snap. So that's sexy in the same way as Jacob Rees Mogg, Michael Gove or Theresa Mistletoe Coffee, is it? <laughs> so what has the booger got underneath his kilt? A pair of grubby Union Jack wifelets with swastikas on, probably. <laughs> This week, Russia developed a bizarre James Bond-style spy rock listening device once used by MI6. Well, it's good to know we're one step ahead of the Russians, but why does it have to be in spy rocks? You know the British spy rocks, don't you? The prototype was called Stonehenge. That was in the days before miniaturisation. MI6 also developed a spy rock with a Mohican haircut growing out of it called the Punk Rock. <laughs> Strictly's Nikita Kuzmin spoke out on Dance Off about his wardrobe malfunction. The shirt had a mind of its own, he weeped. Good job one of you had, Nikita. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay also kept sobbing when his daughter Tilly danced her way into oblivion. She's got two left feet, but then so has Gordon's duck patty. 
This has been Error of the Woke, leading the guerrilla war against the Tory National Front, one-party state. However, the party's been cancelled because of Covid. (laughs) 